The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. From Hollywood, The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. This is Ed McMahon, along with Doc Severinsen and the NBC Orchestra, inviting you to join Johnny and his guests, Bobby Darren, Orson Bean, Seals and Cross, and from the San Diego Zoo, Joan Embry. And now, here's Johnny. Turn to page 200 in the hymnal. <laughs> Sounds like one of Earl Roberts' audiences. Yeah. Yaha time. A whoopee crowd. It's like a group session during a coffee break or something. <laughs> it's good therapy sessions, what I meant to say. But <laughs> You've been, been away. away. I've been away for a week. It, you know, every time I, I'm off the show, uh, it takes me a, at least a show yeah. to get back on schedule. And sometimes it's hard to get rolling in white shoes. <laughs> Don't you like these? They're lovely. Certainly. Why not? Get you look nice. like that guy that does everybody needs milk, you know. That... <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, they'll never ask you to do one of those. Nobody believes it. <laughs> uh, uh, I did something when I was on vacation. I want you to know this before we get started. I joined a group called Monologues Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> now, what that is, that's a group that helps desperate comedians. And the way it works is, every time you get the urge to be funny... They send an audience over to discourage you. Did you know? <laughs> it's kind of a wild thing. Uh, I was, you were, you are tan too. You I was at the Springs. I was, I, I had a little time in Acapulco, and I got to yeah. tell you some funny stories. That I want to hear about When you travel, especially when you think you're a big television star, and you go to Mexico where they don't know you. It, <laughs> oh, does it cut you down to size? It, <laughs> it really levels you out real fast. I'll tell you some stories, but they had an earthquake. You might have yes, heard down there. We were worried about you. You know, Come, you what do you mean? Any time you're out of the country, I worry about you. Well, Any time you're out of the house, I worry about you. But, uh, we had a uh, had an earthquake there, and I didn't mind much. But the hotel charged me ten dollars extra for a vibrating bed. <laughs> um, I'll tell you some, I'll tell you some weird stories, right. things that happen trying to get through customs down there. Um, Groundhog Day has happened since I have been gone. Are you aware of that? Yes. Every year, there's a particular groundhog. What's the name of the town in Pennsylvania? Poxitawney, isn't that it? Poxitawney, Pennsylvania. Every year the groundhog comes out. Apparently, it came out this year, saw its shadow, went back in a hole, which means, according to custom, another six weeks of winter, right? Now, different groundhogs do different things. Here in Burbank, for example. <laughs> that groundhog came out, took a look at Burbank, and went back in for a year. <laughs> and it's not coming out. Um, there was another best-dressed list of men listed today. George McGovern was voted the best-dressed politician. He has the best clothes. I think he'd rather be in Nixon's shoes, but uh, he had the best clothes. <laughs> McGovern made the political list. Doc made, did you know that? The list for television personalities. Hey, hey, hey. That's right. And Tommy Newsom. That's right. And Tommy Newsom got honorable mention in infant's wear. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's see. Uh, you only talk when you're down here, Tom. Uh, oh, now there's a new commercial on television here in Los Angeles that I had not seen. I guess it's been on. Sam Yorty's wife, Mary Yorty's wife, is doing a television commercial. Have you seen it? No. For blue chip stamps. I hadn't been home an hour. I turned on the. T I haven't seen television for a week. I turned on and she says, "I'm Mrs. Sam Yorty," and she's talking about saving blue chip stamps. I want to tell you, if the airlines gave blue chip stamps, <laughs> I mean, she'd have enough books to get the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> no problem at all. Did you read Dean Martin is getting married? Yep. Uh, yes. Dean Martin is getting married on Valentine's Day. It's not that Dean is romantic. He just wants to celebrate the massacre. <laughs> uh, 
I uh, have. <laughs> Can you see that ceremony? The preacher says, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? And Dean looks around for the cue cards. <laughs> Weird. Now, speaking of weddings, this was in the paper. I did not see it until I, you know, how you catch up in your reading. A lady from, uh, I believe it was Huntington Beach, out here in California. She's a lady anthropologist. You might have read this. Is going to marry or married a cannibal chief in yeah. Indonesia. Right. Now, how many of you read that? Right. Here. Yeah. How could you make that up? She left California yeah. to marry, and did marry, I understand, a cannibal chief in, was it Indonesia? Was that the place? That's a little weird, isn't it? It was a weird wedding. Um, <laughs> in, instead of rice, they threw accent. Did you know that? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you something. Uh, no, I want to tell you something. The chief... <laughs> the chief doesn't... Doesn't seem to have any problems. <laughs> doesn't expect any problems with her relatives because his side of the family ate her side of the family. <laughs> Pretty well. Anyway, we, uh, I'm sorry to giggle. I knew that was coming, you see. And I, uh, well, tonight we got a good show. We have uh, Mr. Bobby Darren with us tonight. We have uh, Orson Bean. Seals and Crofts are here tonight with some music. And uh, the young lady from the San Diego Zoo, Miss Joan Embry, is back with some strange animals. What do we have tonight? Just give me any. A slender loris. Uh, we got a slender loris. Oh, great. Terrific. Remember her? Sure. Slender loris. Yes. Hi, 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 slender loris. <laughs> Toledo, 52. That's right. Uh, and uh, a baby rhinoceros. I mean, a little teeny baby oh. rhinoceros, which weighs about 250 pounds. For a rhinoceros, that's a baby. Uh, and what else do we have? Can we have come on? Help me. Oh, a visitor? El Moldo is visiting. Is El Moldo going to do his great yes. mind reading act tonight? Yes. Okay, this should be a good night. Hi, Doc. How are you? Chief, we'll be with you in just one <laughs> second. Here's a mouthwash that's effective against bad breath, but it tastes good. Ladies and gentlemen, may we have absolute quiet in the studio, please. Would you darken the lights, please, here on stage? Tonight on our stage, direct from a record-breaking one-weekend engagement at Vinnie Flagela's Rocket Room in Van Nuys, we now present the master of mentalism, that reader of thoughts, the marvel of extrasensory perception, and part-time freelance box boy to the stars. Here is the amazing El Moldo. Yes, it is I. <laughs> the amazing. <laughs> Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, the amazing El Moldo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the amazing El Mundo. It is I, the, the amazing El Mundo. I have... <laughs> I have traveled the world over and brought back the mysteries of India, the wisdom of the Orient, the long-lost truths of Tibet, and some porno flicks from Santa Monica you wouldn't believe. Let us go on with it. May I assist you, El Yes, I certainly could use some. <laughs> All right, yes. to begin with, would you tell me exactly how many bills you have in your pocket? Bills. I have a 50, a 20... And three singles. I have $73 exactly. Absolutely right. El Moldo does it again. <laughs> now, to continue, you have a pocket full of change. Yes, I do, right here. You don't have to make an evening of that. Just check the change. <laughs> now, would you be willing, if El Moldo can tell you to the penny how much change you have in your pocket, do I get the 73 bills? It's impossible for you to know how much change I have in my pocket. Reach in your pocket and count your change. I've got it. All righty, you have exactly no sense in your pocket. It is there in your hand, therefore, I have these 73 dollars. <laughs> El Moldo does it again. Wait a minute, El Moldo, you've taken all my money. El Moldo's got to make it quick tonight, or it's, or it's back to a bad lounge on a 747 to Dubuque. <laughs> you think it's a thrill to dress with a great gazambo in a toilet at 30,000 feet? <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. Why don't you get on with your act? Well, I'm sorry about my act, too. I'll get on with it. <laughs> El Moldo is now getting a, vi a vibration. <laughs> or a headache, one of the two. No, it's a vibration. Yes. Will you look up to aisle four? Aisle four. That's right. Let's see. Now, this is very difficult. No, one, no, two, three seats. Right. That's the third seat on row four. Yes, I have it, El Moldo, right here. Is there a person sitting in that seat? Yes, there is. El Moldo does it again. I'm now, I'm now getting a message. Fourth row. Fourth row. Third seat Third from seat the right. From the right. There is a man in that seat without shorts. Wrong. You're wrong. El Moldo was standing in line today behind you. And you, and you don't have any shorts. There you are. Don't eat. Almost well, had to use your own. Yes, I certainly did. <laughs> well, standing in line back of that gentleman. Incidentally, sir, did your wife wear a bra here today? Yes. Well, she's not wearing it home. She was also <laughs> in the line. She was not. I had a good day in the line. <laughs> is there a man in the audience who is president of the Don DeFore Fan Club, has spent all Tuesday matching socks, and whose biggest thrill in life was going to the Alpha Beta supermarket in Reseda to the Six and Under Express line with seven items? <laughs> Is there such a man in the audience? <laughs> apparently, apparently not. There seems to be a seal there in the audience. <laughs> no. All right. Is there such a man in the orchestra? Yes. There's such a man. El Moldo will concentrate. El Moldo, huh? you fell asleep. Oh, well, El Moldo can concentrate on any given personality, but not on the absence of one. That's the problem right there. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> El Moldo now moves to his biggie. El Moldo feels the audience wants to place their right hand on their hearts. El Moldo, that's crazy. You don't know that. El Moldo, through his great power, will make the audience place their hands on their hearts. Well, how can that be possible? You couldn't... Easy. Hit it. <laughs> El Moldo does it again. El Moldo, that's not fair. Um, is Marty Allen fair? Who cares about fair? It's a 1949 terraplane fair? We're not talking about fair. We're talking about an act. All right. El Moldo, better do smooth segue to pitcher of water bit. Got any more money on you? No, I'm broke. Lend me a dollar. <laughs> now, you've got Let's everything. Let's hock your tie class. Anything at all. I've had a bad week. Give me a check. El Moldo's famous disappearing water trick. Here is a pitcher of water. Yes? El Moldo pours water into small glass. Watch closely and notice that not one 
drop of water spills over the side of the glass. El Moldo does it again. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. El Moldo. Yes. That, that picture was empty. Great trick. Two at once. And now, for the piece de resistance of my act, so-called, because there's not an audience in the world that doesn't resist this piece. <laughs> the famous giant chest shtick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is time for the giant chest. I would guess stick. so. And El Moldo would love to get stuck with this giant <laughs> chest. All right. Step right over here, my dear. I love working with groups. <laughs> Ever since frickin' track. Well, don't tell me you're going to do this trick with an empty chest. You see one? All right, this is my new assistant. What is your name, dear? I'm Laurel Canyon. Laurel Canyon. <laughs> Step right in here, my dear. You have nothing to fear. Are, are you sure these spikes won't hurt me? We'll soon find out. Just go into the cabinet. Watch this one. We close the door. El Moldo, what have you done with that girl? Nothing. We just went to my apartment, had him a couple of drinks, that's all. No, 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 no. I mean, listen, right now. Listen, listen to some Jerry Vale records? Nothing no, no. big at all. What? Right now? I don't know what I did. It's a new chest. Well, let's see what happened. Two thousand bucks. Shot to hell. Yeah. Sorry about that. You sure do know how to deflate a girl's ego. El Moldo does it again. Ladies and gentlemen, the great El Moldo. Back. I got yes. the giggles. I couldn't stop. Oh, that was on one night on we Karnak. Remember the both of us? We couldn't roll. We sat a couple years ago and sat here like two, two kids idiots. in church giggling. <laughs> giggling and we couldn't stop. It's yeah. like you, you get started. Well, well anyway. It's nice to have you back. You look great, by the way. You look Thank rested. You. More I've, rested than I've seen you in years. I feel great. Um, I did really nothing this trip. You know, usually you plan and say, I'm going to do this. We, Joanna and I went to Acapulco for about a week. That's a lovely place. Yeah. I haven't been there since... Uh, 1960. You've been there before. Yes. First, I walk in, I think, gee, I'm getting away from television, and I walked over to uh, the tennis club at the uh, Acapulco Princess. Princess yes. It's a beautiful hotel. It's built like Mayan sculpture or something, and it's open from the... In other words, you walk into the lobby and you look up to the top, it's all open. 16 stories. The windows are all on the outside, or the apartments, and beautiful. you look up clear to the ceiling. And I walk into the tennis club, and there's a picture of you. First thing I see in Acapulco, I'm getting away from television. There's a picture of Ed McMahon with Bill Sweeney, the tennis pro. Right, yeah. You said you took some lessons took from some him? some lessons. He's great. Very great guy from Boston. How about that hotel? That's just incredible. Tell him the story about customs. You're trying to sneak something confident. Oh, no, 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 no. I wasn't trying to sneak. You were sneaking something into Mexico or something out of Mexico. Now, tell him the truth. No, no, no. Come on. Now. <laughs> They're going to think I'm smuggling something illicit. Um, I went, went down there, and uh, first night I walked out, and the sky was incredibly clear. You know, you get away from the city, and you can see the Milky Way. And, you know, I'm an amateur astronomer. And I didn't bring my telescope. I just didn't think of it. Now, with my telescope, you know, it was at Celestron. It's an 8-inch Schmidt Casagrain. Well, I don't know what I'm telling you that for. Yeah. It's a particular kind of lens, and it all folds up. Look, a very strange-looking piece of apparatus. So I called the man at my house, and I said, Would you send the telescope down to Acapulco? I want to look at the stars. Forgetting about customs. So now the telescope arrives at the customs, and I go over from where I'm staying at another place called Trace Vitas, which is beautiful. And I go to customs to pick up the telescope. And I start to walk out the door. Senor, 
Mm. Uh, mm. Mm. Put, put that down. Oh, I said, what? I just said I came over. I'm Johnny Carson. I sent home for my telescope. He took, opened it up. You know? And mm. that guy looked like a customs officer that you would cast. Yeah. You know, he had the hat, he had the badge. Probably a mustache. Huh? A little, oh, yeah, a little mustache. And uh, I had to open it up. And uh, now I'm trying to explain. I have limited Spanish, you know, enough to get around in Mexico. And I'm trying to explain that I want to look at the, the stars in the sky. And he looked at this and he said, uh, how much that cost? And I thought, you know, I was going to pay duty on it or something. And I said, well, it was, it was a gift, actually. Yeah, I, I says, he says, that's, that's a nice gift, he said. That's a, but how much it could cost if you buy it? And I told him. Now, I'm trying to convince him that it's just for my own personal use, you see, because they think if you're going to take something in Mexico, and rightfully so, you might sell it, and that's illegal. Now, all the people are coming off the plane from Los Angeles, and they're stopping me, you know, signing autographs. This fellow, of course, doesn't know who I am, and I'm beginning to wonder who I am also. <laughs> so I figured it'd be no problem at all, you know. And he says, you must be very famous in the Los Estados Unidos. And I said, well, I have television work. And the people are falling down because they're all going right through customs. And you, you can't know. get through. They're saying, hi, how are you, Pedro? And they're walking through, and I cannot get through. <laughs> so after about half an hour, I finally convinced him that this was just, you know, for a hobby. So now that's not really the finish of the story. The finish is I get the telescope to the hotel. I had forgotten to send the eyepieces that fit in the... So naturally, I cannot see anything without the eyepieces. <laughs> So now I said, do I wish to go through this again? So I called back, and David at my house, and I said, would you send the eyepieces? Get a call from customs. Um, they want $40. Import duty. Because if you take optical instruments in, like if you brought them to the United States, they didn't realize they were for the telescope. Now I got a schlep back to customs. And I get another guy. Not the same one. This is another fella. He doesn't know who I am. He doesn't know from the telescope the first time. It was hysterical, trying to explain that the telescope and so forth, about, about a half hour. But they finally said, okay, it was all right. It was only for your personal use. But that's lovely down there, and the sky was gorgeous. And the Beautiful. Went to scuba diving, played tennis. Played with Don Budge and his wife. Great. Don Budge, one of the great tennis yeah. players in the world. Played doubles with him. And uh, what else did we do? i got to tell you, the things you do. You took Spanish. I took Spanish in college. So you go down there thinking you're going to use some of this college Spanish, which you never should really attempt to do, pulled into a gas station. Uh, gasolina. Now, that's not too, too oh. bad, right? Gasolina. I, like... I can handle that. Yeah. <clears throat> and there's a young Mexican boy, 12, 13 years old, and so I said, uh, I only wanted about $4 worth of gas, which is uh, 50 pesos. So I said, uh, 50 pesos, figuring that would be the easiest way to do it. So he puts the 50 pesos of gas in. And the windshield is kind of dirty. And I don't really know how to handle that. And I, I remember a lave... I think that's something like wash or something. So I said, uh, pointing to the windshield, I said, uh, lave a uh, conodo, four for four. And he reaches back, picks up a garden hose, <laughs> turns around, and full force from about ten feet away, <laughs> oh, we're in the car. Does the whole window, the hood, <laughs> the roof? Oh. oh, I got hysterical. I got it. And then he reaches in and he points to the thing and he goes. <laughs> <laughs> And I reach over, and it worked great. <laughs> that worked great. I don't know why they don't, oh. don't do that here when you go into an Arco station. Then turn the dawn there, you do that, you know. It was just very little things like that. And uh, Joanna speaks no Spanish at all. We're driving down uh, the uh, Miguel Alamein Boulevard, which is the main boulevard in Acapulco. And she looks over in the beach, in the Bay of Acapulco is beautiful, and she says, uh, why don't we go over to that lovely place there and have a drink? And it was about 45 feet long and 20 with a thatched roof. Mm. You know, with little, mm. one of those beautiful little beach things. So we drove over there to get a drink, and it says, El Baño de Publico. <laughs> the public toilets for the beach. That's <laughs> what they were for men and women. Oh. And, but it looked great from the outside. <laughs> so we did not stop there for a drink. <laughs> we, uh, Moved on. Oh, we had some crazy times. Uh, great. We'll take a brief pause here, and we'll be back after this with Mr. Bobby Nairn. Thank you. 
welcome back. I suppose the word versatile is often overused to describe performers, but Bobby Darren certainly is that. He's a, he's a fine actor, better actor than a lot of people really know, and he's a singer, composer, and his uh, show is seen on NBC Fridays at 10 o'clock. He's also in a new film called Mother's Day, which will soon be released. Would you welcome, please, my first guest, Bobby Darren. Had 
Thank you very much. Just don't have a good opening number, huh? No. See, that's... <laughs> I came with this piece of material hoping it would work. I got another one. I well, can do a crazy. slower one. I never knew. I never knew you played this. We used to call it in the Midwest a mouth organ. Remember that? That that's dates right. you. It's a mouth organ. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. But then again, if I had to earn my living at it, I'd make about $6 per annum. <laughs> it's not a big yeah, call play, for harmonica play players. That. I can play that same thing in two different tempos. Same key. Really? Yeah, and two different harmonicas. Same at the, thing. At the same time? You're, oh, at the same time. That's I used it. to follow an act at a county fair once where the guy had a little harmonica and he put it inside of his mouth and played it too. And I go to McDonald and I came out and died. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No. At a fair, those guys will kill you. And he says, now listen to this. And he, he played a song on it and I came out with my jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I, do, I do that really to give myself a little break in, in the singing thing. Like in an hour and ten minute performance on a nightclub, for example, or in a theater, yeah. you know. I, just to, to break it up a little bit, because I, I would say it's about, thir about 32 minutes out of, an, out of an hour and ten minutes would be yeah. maximum for me to be just doing a vocal kind of thing. Yeah. You know, if you don't break it up with something, for me. Yeah. If you've got great chops and really in great command musically, you know, then... Then you don't really need those little things. But I like yeah. to look at them as little hooks. Just some of the horse around the audience. Right. The audience right. Right. Shows I really, I, I, I have fun with it. If anyone takes me seriously musically, then, then that's like a mistake. I don't mean to impart that feeling. Well, I think you play one of the finest harmonicas I've heard. Well, in the Ooh, last 20 minutes? Since two, two, <laughs> Tuesday. A week Tuesday. <laughs> that's, that's it. See, it's that kind of fun kind of thing. Good to see you again. You're looking well. Thank you, John. I feel all right. I, I feel we like... should have had you here, I understand. When? When Bobby Fish was here. Somebody said you are a chestnut. Is that well, becoming... Well, yeah, I've, I've become a... I've, I've gone... <laughs> no, I don't mean a chestnut. No, 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 no. <laughs> this audience is quicker than a lark tonight, yeah. folks. Uh, I, not a chestnut. I mean a chess, a chess buff. I should have said, or fexionado. Well, uh, in in any chess case, buff. I enjoy the game. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's something I played about a dozen years ago. I started. Yeah. I learned the game. Oh, excuse me. I learned the opening moves. I really played at it at that point in my life. And then, uh, oh, around the time that uh, Fisher uh, uh, destroyed Spassky, you know, last year, I kind of picked up the fever, indeed. And and since that time, I've been you know reading and studying books. And I'm up to winning one out of 73 games. I, I really, is that that's good? fantastic. That's, for me, it's fantastic. Yeah. You know, it really is. It's, it's, I'll tell you what's, what's fascinating about it, John. It, it allows, allows me to have a kind of a recreation that I can talk about, yeah. number one. Number two, that affords me kind of a little bit of a cerebral tickling. You, you like will. that, huh? Yeah, I really do. I mean, I would like to be into golf and tennis. And if I enjoy those things, I would, I would really pursue them heavily. I don't. But this game, 64 squares, and you have to do it all in the 64, and you have to understand, like, that computer, in this day and age, com a computer cannot, is not able to be better than a third-rate player. I mean, that's, that's how incredibly uh, uh, infinite the, vari the variations are in this game. So, and, and I think it's the, one of the few games in the world, indeed, if maybe not the only game, where someone could say, much like life, um, I can never possibly learn all there is to learn about the game. I feel that way about Go Fish. <laughs> uh, well, in that case, an old maid. Like... I've never been able to master yeah. the intricacies of do Go you, Fish. Do you, do you play chess? That shows you. No, it'll give you an idea. No, I don't know a thing yeah. about chess. You don't. Well, maybe that's better. I followed it strangely better. enough on you Channel 13 when they uh, he was playing Spassky, mm -hmm. and I found it fascinating. I didn't know what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. But some guy would illustrate the moves, but the, as you say, the multiplicity of moves are, are staggering. Yeah, it's just incredible. I'm, I'm sponsoring, I'm very proud of this, I'm sponsoring a chess classic, an international uh, classic, if really? you will. And yes, later this year, it'll be uh, sometime in October or November of this year. And it will be the first um, grandmaster, uh, uh, the largest right. purse ever offered to uh, a grandmaster uh, uh, event like this. There'll be 16 grandmasters in, in, the, uh, in the event itself. It'll take 15 days to play, actually not including uh, weekends. And I'm really excited about it. And interestingly enough, somebody panned me the other day for, for jumping on some potential bad wagon. Now, now, yeah. now think about this, this reasoning. Uh, they were accusing me of, of starting what will now be a glut, a la the, the, the various um, uh, uh, golf tournaments and tennis tournaments no. sponsored by entertainers. And the bottom line is that the game of chess really has um, kind of lain dormant, if you will, up until last year, and any kind of uh, help to it 
uh, should be at least, if not ignored, all right, to say the least, then at least certainly not wrapped. Don't, you know, worry, about I kind of... don't worry about what the press says. They've got to say something anyway, so they're going to give well, you a shot no matter what. Yeah, but the guy spelled my name wrong, too. Ah. <laughs> I would like to see the tournament, provided Howard Cosell doesn't call it. Can you see Howard Cosell oh, that calling a chess tournament? Huh? That's got to be. He moved it to King Knight 4. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Is, that, is you... there such a thing as a King Knight yes, 4? Yes, you do know the game. You oh, I'm cheat. very hip on it. Oh, we have to take a break? Okay. Then, then I know you, you can't stay all night. Well, I, but, I can uh, stay for a few minutes, and then I have to go. Okay, and... let me do this, and... Uh, now, do I hold up something? Yes, I do. I no. don't hold up something. <laughs> <laughs> See how quick you lose it when you're off for a week? <laughs> now, there's a better brand of fabric softener. You simply spray in your dryer. Cling free. We're talking with uh, Bobby Darren. Hey, your new show is uh, is doing well, isn't it? Well, I, I, I compared to what is what I'd have to say without trying to be facetious about it. I, it's a weekly television show. It's on Friday night at ten. I think you right. said that before you introduced me. And and I tell you, I'm really excited when I'm performing. I, I must say that television is not my idea of a <clears throat> happy land in which to work. Only for the simple reason that it is difficult for my kind of person to compromise yeah. as heavily and as fully as indeed television insists uh, upon. And, and I don't mean to, to take away from any of the uh, executives or the producers or writers. It's just the kind of medium where all of a sudden they say, well, we, we really can't do it again. We, the, the budget yeah. doesn't allow, and we have to get it out because next Friday we're on. And, and it's... You know, I'm used to You're a little more, the, uh, little more control. You walk out to a nightclub audience or to a theater audience, and something goes a little awry. You know, you can exp they can relate to it because it, they, it happens right there. There's a humanness about it. The tube seems to want to break up the rhythm between us, or between me at least, and the person at home. And I, I wish I could feel totally comfortable. Mm. See, here, where there's a live audience, I get that chance for the circle to be right. in, you know. And, and maybe I'm too aware of it. Maybe I'm too, too self-conscious about, about too the camera. conscious of the fact that there is a, an interrupting device called yeah. the uh, called the camera. But I don't know. I, 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 I think television is, is almost your most intimate medium, really. You, you really think so? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't that fascinating? I, I don't. If I, I don't know whether it's fascinating can, or not. No, it's just a... no. I mean, no. It's in, <laughs> so interesting that you can feel that way, and obviously you're such a big hit on it. So I, I, I really respect. I what feel you're comfortable saying. with it. Yeah. But let me ask you this. You play, as I try to play, to the living, breathing protoplasm, the, the delicious human being sitting out there. And, and, and I, I choose to try to ignore that camera, don't you? Do you, you don't play the camera. I am you? conscious of it, but I'm not conscious of it. Yeah. Well, maybe it's a question I of another I think Thoreau few. once said that. I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he was certainly worth repeating. And they put him in a home. He was oh, that's you're about to do that to that right now. You're conscious of it, but you're not conscious yeah, of it. Yeah, he was only on three weeks. Uh, and summer replacement show yeah, from, and they from the pond. Get the cable into the right. pond, right? Uh. So it's, still, it, it's just a strange thing. I, if I, I get a chance to get used to it, I probably will refuse. <laughs> and probably should. Yeah, I really feel that's that. very deep. I think I don't yeah. know. No, it's nothing to do with depth. It no. has to do with feeling. That's yeah, it. I know what you mean. You know, yeah. you know, we talked about this once before. Speaking of Walden, your original name was. Yeah. Walden Robert? My real name is Walden Robert Casado. Right. And, uh, hey, listen, it's one of the few times it didn't get met with a laugh. <laughs> Must be used to it by now. Walden. Yeah, that's my name. Yeah, I don't know. My mother thought it would add something to it. Did me. she like Walden to... Pond oh, or something? Well, just... Yeah, I don't know. She, she had a whole number of... But she used to say, don't forget that, uh, you know, your uh, ancestry is from... Uh, 
of that part of the country that settled this uh, great nation and all. And I would look at us at that and 15 cents, get us on the subway, Ma. Yeah. You know, give me a break. Let's get out of this slum before we start worrying about our names and yeah. all that kind of thing. And she would say, slum? This is no slum. She had a marvelous idea. Thought she was rich. She really thought yeah. she was. Yeah. <laughs> She's a great lady. She thought she was rich. She had like nine cents on home relief. That's truth. And all of us, I, I, I was in a, a cardboard uh, box for a crib, the bottom drawer of a, of a, of a dresser for a, for a crib. They thought they were wealthy. Yeah, we're doing very well. Don't worry about it. And indeed, <laughs> in, indeed, well, I was 12 years old. I was still in that crib. But indeed, there was, there's always somebody who's poorer. So I, I guess And that's, if you don't know the difference, I suppose the comparison... Well, I knew relevant. it. I must have been born with some kind of computer in my head because automatically I said, wait, this is... I mean, right. you said it to me, I'm in a box. Yeah, I'm in a box. <laughs> in a barn. That's and a smart kid when you're lying in your six good. months. Says, I'm in a, a box. Well, no. It, somebody interpreted. Somebody had to translate. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's I, all nonsense. I wish you much success with the thank show, you, really, John. and I thank, thank you, you for very coming, much. and uh, I look forward to the chess thing. Yeah, really. I, I'm yeah. going to have some fun with it, and those people who are interested in chess, I hope they'll kind of uh, get behind it and support the I think it's going to have a resurgence. Thank, thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you, John. Thank, thank you, Bob. Good amazing. Change, change of pace there. You've been away a week, but how... It's put those pithy thoughts into your head. Those deep things you were saying. Just uh, Sometimes it isn't, and sometimes it pearls, is. Pearls, yes. yes. Well, it's, it's gems. A thought to conjure with. We'll continue in a moment with uh, Orson Bean. We also have Joan Embry, and we have Seals and Crofts with us tonight. So, uh... Bean is with us tonight. Uh, he's an actor, a comedian, uh, does a little bit of everything. A writer, makes eucalyptus trees out of paper. Um, he'll be starring in Promises, Promises at the Coconut Grove Playhouse in Miami next month and then up to Fort Lauderdale. And tonight, I don't know what he's going to do, but it's another one of the facets of his performing prowess. Whoa, I haven't used that whoa. in seven years. i got to start writing some of these performing things Performing prowess. Uh, he's going to perform a poem tonight. Here's Orson Bean. You may remember me. I formerly went on the screen under the name of Irene Dunn. I want to do a little, uh, a little poem which I've written. Or is it written? Well, you hear it, it's written. It's a little poem all about li life in New York City and the IRT subway, the Interboro Rapid Transit. And it goes something like this. <clears throat> something like this. It goes exactly like this. This is it. <laughs> Last week I'm riding in the IRT, and this poor slob is sitting right across from me. So he's sitting in the subway, kind of slumped in his seat like a tired old dog, so dead, so beat. His clothes, his face, everything looks sad, and I'm thinking what a rotten life he must have had. So I look in his face, and what do I see? He looks like he's feeling sorry for me. <laughs> but you don't know the IRT. The windows are filthy, the lights are dim. It was my own reflection, and I am him. <laughs> well, right then and there, I take stock of myself. Broke, no job, no prospects. Let's face it, I'm middle class. So what do I do? I whip out my copy of the Reader's Digest, and I read an article about how to be a success. It's called, I Upped My Income. <laughs> It's, it says, study the successful men around you. 
So I look around the subway, and I see all these whiskey ads, old grandma, four feathers, Cal stairs for the man who cares. And I see all these guys in the whiskey ads, industrial giants, university grads, movie stars, big shots, executive types, and they're sitting there drinking and smoking their pipes. Look how they dress. They reek of success. The men who switch are famous and rich. They all drink whiskey and they're all on top. And I, like a schmo, never touch a drop. <laughs> George Greps has switched to Calstairs, another one of these famous men. He sits by the fire in a wood-paneled den with the rugs so thick and the drapes so plush. And he sits there, a rich and powerful lush. So I'm sitting in the subway, and I start to think, who the hell am I that I shouldn't drink? <laughs> so I'll take a drink like these fellas do, and I'll get my picture in the subway, too. I get off the subway, and I go to the Baidui Bar and Grill. The place has a very distinguished air, and there's several men of distinction there, clustered in groups of three and four, some on the bar, some on the floor. <laughs> Bartender says, well, you have. I says, listen, bartender, I've decided to switch. Could you mix me up something? I'll be famous and rich. He takes a bottle off of the shelf. He says, did you ever hear of a whiskey called Two Partners? I says, yeah. He says, this stuff is called sole ownership. <laughs> he says, very private reserve, got a kick like a bear. One drink of this stuff, you're a billionaire. I says, I'll get my picture in the subway. He says, Buster, you'll be plastered all over the subway. <laughs> I pay him. He pours. I reach for the glass. I'm ready to enter the upper class. I get a good grip. I stick out my lip. The first million's the hardest. <laughs> I take a little sip. <sighs> hey, it's working. <laughs> Lousy unions. <laughs> I grab the glass, today's my day, it's down the old hatch and bombs away. <laughs> I'm rich. I'm going to go out and buy me a house, a yacht, a limousine, a stomach pump. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just as unsure as when I was poor. I'm a billionaire, you think I'm secure? I just made my fortune, I just drank the shot, and I feel any minute I could lose what I got. <laughs> Wait a minute, I took a drink, I'm famous and rich. What if people hear and they all start to switch? That's all we need, a fine state of affairs. Sixty-five million unemployed billionaires. I yells, all right, the lot of you, get out of the bar. Who the hell do you think you are? Glasses crashing, chairs are smashing, whiskey is splashing. Now nobody's going to get rich no more because the source of supply is all over the floor. I swim through the crowd and out the door. My limousine's waiting in front of the bar. Two liveried chauffeurs stand by the car. In with the stomach, out with the chest. And I see in the car door a beautiful crest. 23rd Precinct. <laughs> now I'm riding like the governor with a siren and a bell. And they check me in at this fine hotel by pressing my fingers on a little ink pad. Then they take my picture for the whiskey ad. The next thing I know, I'm lying in bed. My wife is putting eyes on my head. I tell her the story, the drink, the bar, the billion dollars, how rich we are. She says, listen, sweetheart, now that we're members of the upper class, you think maybe they'll turn on the lights and the gas? <laughs> so I went out on the back porch, leaned over the rail, and gave up the whole idea. <laughs> Piece of material. Wait, I've never heard you do that. No. I've never heard you do that. It's a good piece of material. I didn't write it, in fact. A yeah. genius named Les Pine who lives out here wrote right? it from the days when he lived there. Very clever. Yeah. Says a lot of things, doesn't yeah. it? Um, yeah. Oh, doesn't, isn't this a great switch? <laughs> <laughs> good, good move. If you have people, if you uh, if you have people who are counting on you, <laughs> well, that's very uncomfortable. Get them off your back. No, I don't know what it is. <laughs>
Travel arrangements by United Airlines, doing business in 113 cities, so you can too. At United, your land is our land. We're back. We're talking with Orson Bean. We also have a very talented uh, Seals and Crofts with us tonight, and Joan Embry from the San Diego Zoo. You still in Miami? You keep. Well, I never know where you. No, are. Well, we you keep, keep moving. bouncing around like a gypsy. Yes, we're still living down at the Palm Bay Club in Miami, yeah. but we're starting to uh, discover. This is the second winter we've spent there, and it's you know the weather, of course, is glorious. It's like here, but without the S M O G. Yeah. And uh, oh, we're <laughs> anxious to avoid four little words. And uh, we're starting to discover the city. Most people go to Miami and they think of Miami Beach, Collins Avenue with the hotels. Right. But Miami is really an extraordinary city. We don't socialize a lot. Our main social life, we go up the block to kindly sell Vittori in his pizza parlor and have a fine pie and a bottle of cheap red. But Miami is an extraordinary city that is built on and around water. And I never realized it's almost like Venice parts of it. Large parts of it. Yeah, but the canals. canals. All over the place. And, like, Bert Parks lives down there. There's a lot of actors. That Mickey Rooney lives down there. As, yeah, as a matter of fact, yeah. Mickey Rooney just opened an acting school, which boggles the mind, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of little kids going to his acting school down there. Wearing cigars and derbies. But uh, Bert Parks uh, can hop in his boat. He lives right on one of the canals. He can hop in his boat and go... All over the city without ever getting in a car. I thought you were going to say right to Atlantic City for the Miss <laughs> yeah. America thing with us. Yeah. Right. And, uh, like, there's a place down there called uh, Coconut Grove, which is where the theater is, right. where I'll be. And that's like the Greenwich Village of, uh, of Miami. There's interesting, there's a hippie community there, there's an art community. As a matter of fact, I was over there last week and I brought you something. It was a sweet young girl sitting there, looked like a fine, sweet young girl. And I said, What are you doing? She was painting something. She paints dirty belts. So I brought you one here. She paints? Yes, X-rated belts. But well, beautiful. I... Don't come in for a close-up. That's, that's for you. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> you put it under the table. I'll tell you. Yeah. It's kind of a tableau, a living yeah, tableau, yeah. isn't it? Is this really for me? That is Are for you. Are you serious? It's handmade and it's one of a kind. And, uh, That'll be, that's be nice couplings. to wear in a closet somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's very, very nice of you. Uh, uh, do you have a brown paper bag uh, I can take? That's a very talented young lady. She is. Sweet young thing. I think her name was Sharon. <laughs> Sweet little Sharon. Sunny that? skies, isn't it? Well, name give her my Sweet. love and thank you for that. <laughs> Raised by the nuns in a poverty stricken convent in Fort Lauderdale. But um, anyway. Uh, do you ever travel a lot? Have you been to some place like Mexico? Y yes, I have been to Mexico. Do so you love Americans who, again, I guess we're all guilty of it, who try to use the language when they have no need to use it? Yes. Uh, we were just leaving the airport, and a big fella come up. I don't want to say big Texan because people always say a big Texan. But a big fella came up, and he comes to the airport bar. And he says, oh, give me some Cervantes. <laughs> and, that, and that guy, you know, the Mexican boy, what they know, no comprende uh, 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 inglés, you know. He says, you know, a bottle of Cervantes. 
He meant cerveza, ah, which is beer. Yes. And the poor guy, and he says, and then finally he gets real angry, and he says, beer! Yes. You know, but if, you, know, you want to go oh, hide someplace hide. because the guy thinks he's so right. The only saving grace is if you travel long enough, you find that other people's tourists are just as bad as ours. It's not only it's, Americans. There's nothing worse than German tourists, for instance. It's worse than really? Texan tourists. But I, I did that once. I was in a hotel in Mexico City, and I was determined to speak Spanish. And I called down for room service, and I'm desperately saying, like, dos huevos pasa para el agua con jambon fritos on mantequilla. And the poor broad at the other end of the phone was trying to understand me and then answering me back. We went on literally for about eight or nine minutes like this, and finally I lapsed into English. And she said, you speak English? I thought you were with that Swedish party. Why didn't you tell me you speak English? Why you... I'll tell you where they can really cool you. After you're there a couple of days, I think you want to show that you have, you want to learn their language, so you yes. try it. And the, but then, then they really cool you, put you in your place. I would call down, for example, for room service, and they would say, what the room number are you in? I'd say, Ciendo Cinco y Seis, which is 102, 5, and 6. And she'd say, that's 102, 5, and 6? Oh, I know. <laughs> Just after you've done what you thought was your impeccable Spanish. Really? Siendo, she says, that's 5 and 6. And I said, yes, that's 5 and 6. <laughs> <laughs> so you forget it. The worst people in the world for that are the French, like French head waiters. If you try and show off to your date and you order in French, uh, deux vichyssoises en glace, I say, two vichyssoises. <laughs> but God forbid you try to speak in English. That they don't understand they either. Not. They humiliate you yeah. no matter which way you go. They can cool you. Do we have to do a little, little thing here? All right. We'll do this, and then Seals and Cross will join us. And uh, I've got it right here. Arnell and Fortrell. You remember them? Oh, let's do it. Opening act. Yes. Men's Fabrics Tester to live up to their reputation. Here are the... Next guests are two of the most popular young composers and performers in contemporary music. They uh, recently won a gold record for their hit Summer Breeze and were just nominated for a Grammy Award for the best pop performance by a vocal duo, which is about as good as you can get in the music business. This is their current album called Summer Breeze. Would you please welcome Seals and Cross? Oh. Thank you. This song is a symbolic song about the prophet founder of the Baha'i faith. Baha'u'llah, we call it Hummingbird. One, two, three. Oh, Hummingbird, mankind was waiting for you to come flying along. Heavenly songbird, we were so wrong. We climbed you. Sweetness 
I wanted to mention the number that the fellows did is from their album, Hummingbird, Summer Breeze. They're very talented uh, oh, yeah. duo, aren't they? It's the uh, best popular music being written these days in, in years and years. Yeah, it's... Uh, Wonderful by guys like this. My next guest was with us just a couple of weeks ago, but this is a very t busy time of year, I understand, at the San Diego Zoo. And new animals are being born daily on the premises, folks. <laughs> so we asked we ask if she had a rhinoceros around, and she happened to have a new baby... White, rhino, white rhinoceros, I guess, which is very rare. Have you ever seen one? Never. I've never seen one. But I understand she has something else before we look at the rhinoceros. It's kind of a build-up, so the rhinoceros is a <laughs> big payoff. You just don't make a rhino out, you're blowing your whole act. <laughs> Save the rhino for the... If you know anything about show business, a rhino always closes. That's right. <laughs> because the stage may not be fit. That's for right. Action. may not be fit for anything. Uh, would you welcome Joan Embry. Thank you. 
An old accent. Of course. Not quite. Not quite Orson uh, said a lemur, but is that from the same family of a... We, had a... we had a lemur on once. This is a slender loris. A oh. slender loris. Hi, 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 hi. <laughs> it's like I get that out of my, my head, slender loris. He's a nocturnal animal from India and Ceylon, and a member of the primate family. In Why Ceylon. isn't he sleeping? Oh, that's right. He's nocturnal. He comes he, out at night. That's right. <laughs> he's in his element. And uh, he is very, you know, he's very closely related to the lemur. And similar because of oh, the facial structure. He's adorable. Is that, a, is that a, a lot of anthropology? I've read the thought that this is kind of a link also uh, between a man somewhere along the line? Well, there's a progression of yeah. development uh, among various primates, and this one is not very high on the scale. The great apes would be the ones that would right. be more compared to human development. Slender Loris. They live only about seven years in captivity. There aren't too many zoos that do show them because they're nocturnal and they aren't out during the day for display. So how do people uh, and they see them? Long. Well, usually by the type of enclosure. Some uh, zoos are now going to. Uh, That's, is that a comfortable position for him? I assume it is, or he wouldn't, or he wouldn't well, be doing that. He has uh, a very close relative in the same family called the slow loris, and you he really has little very, hands. Right. You notice how very slowly he moves. That's why the. Original loris was called the slow loris, and then he is more slender than the slow, so he's called the slender loris. And he has a fat grooming... people always go That's slower. Right. In, in contrast to the fat loris, or the <laughs> medium fat loris. He's uh, strictly arboreal. They eat things like tree frogs and bird eggs, and uh, in zoos we feed them fruits. Is he, is he all right to touch? You can touch him, but he bites. Right well, then, uh, you've answered... <laughs> You've answered my question, I think, very, very succinctly there. I'm not going to touch him. Then. I have to warn people. <laughs> Why would he bite? Well, actually, they kind of grab a hold of you with both front uh, uh, appendages and then uh, give you a good bite. <laughs> what make him so mean? That's right. No, nobody explained that being, to me before. Just being a wild animal, just the stimulus. So they're not good pets or things like that, those are you. I wouldn't think so because they are difficult to keep. They have a delicate diet and they do not live long. Very interesting. I've never seen one before. They're kind of fun to watch because they are very slow, methodical animals. Well, they've got a lot of time to do it in. <laughs> all I mean, night in fact, you spend all your life on that stick, you know. You, you don't have to move too damn fast to see the... You, you could see that whole stick in an hour. You know, to think you're going to spend seven years on that stick. You know. How would you like to wake up in the morning? I think I'll go to the other end of the stick. <laughs> Big tree in his yes. house. Oh, he's got a whole tree. I thought this was it for him. <laughs> oh. All right. I, uh, Orson, do you want to hold the slender Lawrence? All right. Well, what does this mean? We need oh, we have some film. We're going to yes. show you some film first of this white rhinoceros. How old is this little uh, animal? We're going well, to see. Well, he was born on December 11th. Does he bite strangers that hold his stick? No, no we're talking. Uh -huh. <laughs> when he gets to this end, you just turn it When he gets to the end of the stick, turn the stick around. <laughs> He doesn't know where he's going. <laughs> I got the trick now. You think he knows one end of that stick from another? You ought to know. All right, let's watch the monitors in the studio, and then you can tell them what's happening here, okay. uh, Jones, since I have the slightest idea. All right, here we are. You can see the monitors in the studio. Well, the animal was born at our wild animal park, and we had 20 that arrived in February of That's not a rhinoceros. Well, we had, we had to give oh, a, view, a few it. of the surrounding animals found in the South African enclosure where we house the rhinos. They have about 95 acres to roam. Uh, the male, which was taken out from the San Diego Zoo, had not bred in captivity before, but after seeing the 20 uh, new rhinos, he did fairly well, and we now have four babies <laughs> that have been produced in the South African enclosure. And the train goes throughout the geographical areas that we show, and this was the firstborn on October 11th, and the mother was able to successfully care for her own youngster in this case. Do they suckle, the, these uh, babies? Yes, they do. They uh -huh. do nurse. and Carefully. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very. Very carefully. Two porcupines, yes. The second and third animals born were pulled because they were born in the evening when it was quite cold and weren't able to get their circulation going oh, and move about. So we took them into the nursery and put them in a very large tub of hot water and put them in an electric blanket to get them going again, fed them milk. And this is uh, Bender and playing with his trash can. That's one of his favorite toys. 
And he is the one that is here tonight. That's Bender, huh? Right. And he's being raised in what we call our animal care center. And we have also many young animals for the children to view in a paddock area. He gets a, a milk formula with no fat, non-fat milk, and also with carol syrup added. to get Everybody it. needs milk, even Bender. <laughs> yes. Yes. And he drinks about eight gallons a day. He's fed every two and a half hours. Yeah, turn your stick, Orson. <laughs> is quite friendly for a rhino and gets along, gets along well with the girls who take care of him. Uh, he yeah. enjoys being scratched and uh, likes to go out in the paddock and run. You see here the goats are not... Does he scare the goats? No, but they're frightened of him. <laughs> yes, that's, that's a very good judgment. They seem to be quite frightened. They just watch him intently, and as soon as he makes... They creep up on him, and then as soon as he makes a move, they all turn around and run. You wonder what the goats are thinking there, don't you? Huh? What is that? Right, what that. is <laughs> These were the second, third, and fourth babies born in the United States. There was uh, one born in San Antonio the week before ours. And this is the first time that white rhinos have ever been born in captivity. How long are the goats going to live in captivity? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they may not quite well. <laughs> They're not used to that kind of a playmate. You can see that they're really quite agile when they run. I didn't realize they move that far. They're nearsighted, aren't they? They can run about 25 miles an hour. They do not see well. Yeah. They have a good sense of smell and hearing. That helps them to follow the goats. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Who needs to see with a goat? <laughs> That's fascinating. It really is. That's a, that's a great suit. Turn your stick. Okay. Shall we bring out the uh, Bender? <laughs> okay, let's let's bring out Bender. Okay. And uh, maybe we'd uh, take uh, our slow Loris or fast Go Loris. See. What? Go see. Go see Bender. Is Bender in a cage? <laughs> let's hope. Oh! I didn't know it was that big. He's in the baby. Uh, He's only six weeks old. Hi there, fella. Here you go. Right. Okay, Bender. He's very hungry, but he's a little excited. Come here. Bender. He likes to be rubbed under uh, his belly and so under his So do I. <laughs> here, Bender. Bender. There it is. Well, take a look at it. There. there, thank you. I think you're a quart low. <laughs> Where's his horn? Now, they have two horns, and when they're young, uh, it has not started to grow yet, so you can't see very much of it. But it grows continuously, and it's made out of keratin, like your fingernails. Yeah, oh, I see. And they get up to 62 inches long. What, the horn? The horn. That's the record length, 62 inches. I didn't inches. realize that. So five feet. Don't the natives in Africa think it's an aphrodisiac, and they ground, grind the horn up as a powder or something? Yes, and, they... and for that reason, uh, after the late 1800s, these animals became almost extinct. Better night... give me a fresh bottle. He's through this one. <laughs> very, very fast. Well, they get the expression the... horny. Yes. <laughs> in 1929, there were only 20 left in, mm -hmm. in the entire world. And there are now over 1,000, and we hope by raising them at the park to be able to supply other zoos. Yeah. How big will this uh, animal get to be? They get uh, 6 foot 9 inches is the record. Good heavens. Get up, the males usually get up to about 6 foot 6 inches. They weigh 3 to 4 tons, like an elephant. About they, the size. Do they live long like an elephant? They, live, they can live up to 50 years. Normally, we haven't had whites live that long in captivity, but they could live 250. He went through all of this milk. He loves his milk. <laughs> He takes everything. He's not white. Why is that? What? He's not white, Chuck. No. White was from a Boer word which describes the square lip. And this is a distinguishing feature. That's, that's it. Sorry about that. The white rhino, the white rhino is also known as a square lip. And if you can get, we can get his head up here. You can see how square the very front of his mouth is. Is that a boy? He likes to suck on your thumb. <laughs> And the color of a rhino usually matches the color of the type of mud they roll in, but uh, he is a little bit lighter than black. Than the black rhino. Okay, Bender. We'll see. Is that a female or a male? This is a male. It's a okay. male. All right. We'll be right back. We'll take a break. Joan, 
and I thank you again. It's always fascinating when you bring the animals on. Thank you. Great zoo. Orson will be in Promises, Promises uh, in Miami uh, with the Coconut Grove uh, starting when? Well, the last two weeks of uh, March, and then Great. in Fort Lauderdale after that. For Great. Come see us again, will you? Good. I'd love to. Tomorrow night, uh, Jimmy Stewart and his wife Gloria will be with us, Kenny Rankin, Charles Durning, Charlie Schultz, the creator of Peanuts, and the cast of Your Good Man, Charlie Brown. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. This program was pre-recorded.
Vâng, xin kính chào các bác và quý vị anh chị và các bạn thì hôm nay em lại xin giới thiệu với cả quý vị anh chị và các bạn một cái mẫu xe rất là phổ thông và thông dụng bền bỉ tiết kiệm nhiên liệu và bảo trì bảo dưỡng cũng rất là dễ dàng đồ đạc thay thế thì, thì rất hợp túi tiền Đấy. thì ở đây là một chiếc xe Hyundai Grand i10 sản xuất năm 2018 phiên bản số uh, sedan số tự động Đấy, máy 1.2 và thì uh, chiếc xe này là mua được mang tên tư nhân biển Thái Bình Đấy, tư nhân chính chủ biển Thái Bình à, em uh, mới mua được về Để em uh, xin gửi đến uh, hình ảnh chi tiết và quay chi tiết video đến gửi đến quý vị anh chị và các bạn để quý vị anh chị và các bạn à, à, theo dõi tham khảo và nếu bác nào là mà có nhu cầu muốn à, mua cho mình một chiếc xe với phân khúc tầm tiền hơn 300 triệu Đấy, thì liên hệ với em theo số điện thoại là 0968 095 864 à, địa chỉ xem xe là ở mê linh các bác nhé Đấy thì à, kể không à, làm mất nhiều thời gian của quý vị anh chị nữa à, em xin quay chi tiết luôn và giới thiệu luôn à, cái xe này thì à, à, sản xuất năm 2018 mới chạy được có mấy vạn thôi các bác và là siêu lướt sơn xi của nó là còn đến hơn 80 phần trăm mà sơn dịt tất nhiên là nó cũng bị xước sát và cũng được à, tỉa tốt à, một chút rồi thì ba đợt sốc tiếp sau với cả tí chút uh, dưới chỗ ba bô lê Đấy. em cũng uh, có xe có thế nào em cũng nói thế luôn để cho quý vị anh chị và các bác uh, uh, đỡ mất công Đấy, chiếc xe này thì uh, đăng kiểm thì em vừa mới đăng kiểm xong Đấy, nốt láp thì rất là đẹp chiếc xe uh, nó là bản sedan bản đủ nhất đấy thì nó được trang bị là ABS này phanh uh, ABS này và là la dương răng đúc này thì, uh, hai túi khí thì để lổ start top thì, uh, cảm biến nồi cam nồi tích hợp trên gương và màn hình uh, theo xe Đấy. nó về option của nó rất là nhiều và, uh, sau đây là em uh, uh, quay luôn một lượt chi tiết hình dáng bên ngoài của chiếc xe hãy nhìn hình dáng bên ngoài của chiếc xe thì lên form 218 này thì nó đã cải thiện rất là nhiều Đấy. Thế là cái phân khúc xe đan này nhìn chúng ta nhìn có thể thấy là cái cái, cái mặt ca lăng đằng trước của của nó là cải tiến nhìn rất là hầm hố và à, thể thao nữa Đấy. nhìn rất hầm hố và thể thao Đấy. Đấy. cho xe lại loại là nó còn rất là mới rất, chạy rất là ít nó mới được có mấy vạn thôi Đây, mà ngoài ra là chủ xe cũng độ thêm khá là nhiều đồ chơi Đấy, một bộ cái da xịn này và tất cả các cái, cái tiểu tiết bên ngoài phụ kiện bên ngoài là được bọc những cái bọc mà mạ chrome hết Đấy, như là đèn trước đèn pha trước đèn hậu sau uh, ốp lưng gương tay mở cửa và mạ chrome hết Đấy, anh chị xem này Đấy, đây là phía sau của chiếc xe Đấy, nên form 218 này thì cải tiến khá là nhiều luôn Đấy, phía trước và phía sau nhìn rất là thể thao và sang trọng đây là qua các mời các bác xem phía trong đây, đây là cửa sau của bên lái đây. nguyên zin chiếc xe này thì còn nguyên zin từng con ốc như các bác nhé bao tét thầy thợ thoải mái luôn Đấy. quay chi tiết luôn Đấy. Đấy. rất là mới đây là cửa trước bên lái 
cái xe được trang bị là uh, gương kính chỉnh điện hết này ngoài ra còn có uh, khóa uh, chốt cửa tự động đấy khi đi xe chúng ta là chốt cửa tự chốt cửa tự động hết để cho an toàn cho, cho trẻ con này khóa kính này đấy, chốt cửa tự động an toàn cho trẻ con khóa kính đấy, an toàn cho trẻ con này Và lên xuống kính auto các bác nhé đấy, ngoài ra nó còn có chức năng là cục gương nha các bác nhé cục gương gương cục xòe đấy vô lăng thì được tích hợp vô lăng tích hợp vô lăng đầy đủ đấy. ốc thì nguyên bản zin từng con ốc Đấy, bình thường là ấy rồi uh, cam lùi nó sẽ tích hợp trên gương này nha các bác nhé Đấy, màn hình theo xe này Đấy, vô lăng này túi khí này đây một túi khí này ở bên kia một túi khí nữa kìa Đấy. đây là khu vực đấm số Đấy. đấm số còn rất là đẹp điều hòa hai chiều mát lạnh luôn các bác nhé hỏi mình nghĩ gì Đấy, trần thì đây, bọc ni lông này mới cứng luôn này Đấy, trần bọc ni lông mới cứng à, còn đây là à, khoang máy của chiếc xe Đấy, đây là cabo này cabo về trước này nguyên zin tuyệt đối luôn không có đâm đụng và chạm vào này. Đây là khoang máy. Còn rất là đẹp. Đây là hệ thống ABS. Còn rất đẹp. Còn rất đẹp rất mới. sơn chấm ốc là còn nguyên bản đó nhé ốc chưa chạm một con ốc nào cả máy móc này đảm bảo tuyệt đối luôn thời hạn đăng kiểm của nó thì đây đến tháng 5 năm 2022 mới hết Đấy, em vừa mới đăng kiểm xong Đấy, mời các bác các bạn xem lại một lần nữa hình dáng bên ngoài của chiếc xe thì bác nào có nhu cầu sử dụng và sở hữu một chiếc xe sedan số tự động đời cao đời 2018 Đấy, thì mà với tầm tiền hơn 300 gần 400 triệu thì các bác liên hệ ngay với em theo số điện thoại là 0968 095 864 và địa chỉ xem xe thì là ở Mê Linh các bác nhé chiếc xe này thì giá em lên ít lên hết là 365 triệu Đấy. cho các bác bao về cả về giá luôn rất hợp lý Đấy. Đấy, Bác nào mà có nhu cầu thì nhanh tay liên hệ với em Để sở hữu em nó Vâng à, Xin cảm ơn quý vị anh chị và các bạn đã theo dõi video Xin kính chào tạm biệt và hẹn gặp lại
Thank you.